Hello everyone. In continuation to the last session where we discussed the text, the main characters and the various symbols that were used in the text on the face of it, the session today will focus on the three main themes of the text. So let's start. The three themes that we will be discussing today are human connection, disability and perception, loneliness and alienation. We'll start with the first theme, which is human connection, relationships. On the face of it is a short play that mostly consists of a conversation between an old man, Mr. Lamb, and a 14-year-old boy, Derry. The play is largely concerned with the relationships between people and the things that divide them or bring them together. Derry has a burnt face and Mr. Lamb has lost a leg. And so the society treats them differently from the other people. In response to this, Derry has learned to close himself off and avoid others, while Mr. Lamb maintains an attitude of openness. Ultimately, Lamb's friendliness and non-judgmental acceptance wins Derry over. And the two find a strong, though a very brief connection. In Mr. Lamb's character, playwright Susan Hill presents a worldview that embraces openness, the dignity and value of all the people. And the importance of connection and kindness between them. And though Lamb's story ends in a tragedy, his positive effects on Derry are what linger beyond the play's final scene. Derry, whose face was badly burnt by acid in a past accident, avoids others because of how they might react to his disability. In talking with Mr. Lamb, he describes several incidents of people being cruel or insensitive to him. Most notably, he describes two women at a bus stop whispering to each other that he has a face only a mother could love. And yet, even of his own mother, he says that she only kisses him because she has to. And then only on the unburnt side of his face. He also says several times that other people are afraid of him even if they pretend not to be, Derry lingers on these negative experiences and brings them up to Mr. Lamb as his reason to avoid others. He doesn't want to be pitied or feared and so he closes himself off to any human interaction altogether. Indeed, he only comes into Lamb's garden because he assumed it was empty and he admits that he would never have entered if he knew Lamb was there. Tellingly, he also climbs over the garden wall and doesn't even notice that the gate is left open. Derry assumes that people should be closed off from each other. Derry does enter the garden and encounter Mr. Lamb. However, this leads to their transformative conversation. From the start, Lamb treats Derry like any other boy and challenges his extreme reservations. Lamb lives a quiet, contemplative life and welcomes any interaction with people or nature. He leaves his gate open so that anyone might come in and says that he has friends everywhere. People come in, he says. Everybody knows me. The gates always open. They come and sit here. And in front of the fire in winter, kids come for the apples and pears. Later, there's a doubt cast on whether or not all these people actually visited Mr. Lamb. But the important point is that this is what he wants to happen. He likes accepting everyone. I'm interested in anybody, he says. Notably, 
Mr. Lamb welcomes not only positive interactions, but also negative ones. He accepts whatever comes with a spirit of openness. The neighborhood children mock his disability and call him Lamy Lamb. But he still lets them come into his garden to take apples. And they do so. Doesn't trouble me, he tells Derry. While Derry closes himself off to being hurt by others. Lamb keeps himself open to all kinds of interaction. This is also symbolized by the state of his house. There are no curtains on the window and he likes to keep the windows open, even in the rain and wind. He accepts the weather as it comes, just like he accepts people. I'm not fond of curtains, he tells Derry. Shutting things out, shutting things in. While this might sometimes be uncomfortable, Mr. Lamb seems to have found a great deal of peace in his lifestyle. Certainly, far more than Derry. The authenticity of the two characters' connection is put to the test when Mr. Lamb invites Derry to pick crab apples with him later in the day. When he first sees Mr. Lamb, Derry immediately tries to make an excuse to flee. But by the end of their conversation, he is determined to run the three miles home, tell his mother where he is going and then return to Lamb's garden to talk more and help with the apples. This shows just how much Derry has been changed by Mr. Lamb's worldview and that he and the old man have found a real connection with each other. In trying to convince his mother to let him return, Derry even takes on Lamb's attitude, telling her that I want to be there and sit and listen to things, listen and look. He claims that Mr. Lamb says things that matter, things nobody else has ever said, things I want to think about. Derry has often found joy in his connection to the old man. And this inspires him to open himself to the potential of more. At the play's end, Mr. Lamb falls and seems to have died. But it's clear he's touched Derry deeply. As the boy runs to Lamb's body, Derry starts weeping, a sure sign of a bond between the two despite the briefness of their relationship. The play then ends, leaving it unclear whether Derry will withdraw once more in the face of his new pain or if he will continue to follow the old man's example by seeking out, by seeking out connection with others and remaining open to the entire range of human experience. We move on to the second theme, children which is disability and perception. The two main characters of On the Face of It both have a physical disability, but they react to their disabilities in a very different manner. The 14-year-old Derry had half of his face badly burned by acid in an accident, while Mr. Lamb lost one of his legs in World War. Because he has been treated poorly by the society as a person with a visible physical disability, Derry avoids others and assumes that everyone either pities or fears him. Mr. Lamb, on the other hand, sees disabilities as something that don't matter when it comes to one's humanity. And his conversation with Derry offers the boy a different perspective. The play ultimately advocates a shift in perception about disability, both on a societal and an individual level. To more fully embrace the value and dignity of all people, whatever 
their experience or appearance might be. This also includes changing the perspectives of people with disabilities themselves so that they might stop seeing their own disabilities as something to be hated or ashamed of. People treat Derry differently because of his burnt face and so he feels a bitterness towards both his injury and other people. He believes that everyone finds him hideous and either pities him or fears him. And many of his experiences seem to confirm this. Some people try to comfort him with platitudes or fairy tales like the beauty and the beast, while most simply avoid him. He is also clearly hurt by an instance of two women whispering to each other that he has a face only mother could love. And by hearing someone else say that he should have stayed at the hospital with others like himself, Derry rightly blames others for this. But it also makes him hostile to the idea of any kind of human interaction at all. He tries to flee the garden as soon as he realizes Mr. Lamb is there, assuming that the old man will treat him like other people do. Unfortunately, Derry has also internalized society's view of him, saying that he even fears himself when he looks in a mirror. He tells Mr. Lamb, you think I am as ugly as a devil? I am a devil. Derry considers himself fundamentally different from other people because of his disability and feels only shame and anger because of this. Mr. Lamb's disability is not as immediately obvious as Derry's, as Derry points out. Lamb can cover up his leg while Derry can't cover his face. But he also has a fundamentally different perspective about it than the boy does. Mr. Lamb's view is somewhat subtle. He doesn't deny the difficulty of being physically disabled or pretend that things aren't sometimes different and harder for him and Derry than for most people but he also doesn't define either of them by their disability and doesn't let himself feel ashamed or like he is less valuable because of it. Regarding his leg, Mr. Lamb says several times that it doesn't signify, meaning it doesn't matter. He makes various comparisons between physical disabilities and other fundamental aspects of life like saying that hatred is worse than any acid or bomb, the respective causes of Derry and his disabilities. The play doesn't offer much specific social critique regarding how society treats people with disabilities, other than inviting all people to be kinder to each other and not look down on people different from themselves. There is no mention of laws, organizations or civil rights. Instead, its structure of an intimate conversation between two characters largely focuses on a change in perspective on the part of both individuals with disabilities and the ablest society in which they live. Instead of seeing disabilities as things to be hated, hidden away or ashamed of, they can be treated as simple facts of certain people's experience and addressed as such without degrading people's humanity or dignity. Children, we move on to the third theme, which is loneliness and alienation. The play largely consists of a single conversation, right? A large part 
of poignancy of this brief connection brief because Mr. Lamb presumably dies before their relationship can grow any further. It is the fact that both characters live in a society that makes them feel alienated and alone. Because of their respective physical disabilities, Derry and Mr. Lamb are treated differently from other people. And this leads them to lives of relative isolation, whether willingly or not. On the face of it explores some of the ways people separate themselves from others and alienate certain people and shows just how damaging loneliness and isolation can be. Derry has secluded himself, mostly willingly, as he hates how people treat him because of his badly burnt face. When he enters the garden and first sees Mr. Lamb, he immediately makes an excuse and tries to leave, despite the old man's welcoming words. Soon after, Derry says, I don't like being with people, any people. He assumes that others find him hideous and he doesn't like to see them being afraid of him. It's also implied that Derry's mother contributes to this isolation as she refuses to let him return to Mr. Lamb's house and seems to purposefully keep him at home because of his disability. These isolating measures are meant to protect Derry from pain. He doesn't want to be rejected by others and so he avoids. He avoids others altogether but he's clearly lonely and this leads him to bitterness and even anger. Mr. Lamb is more complicated. He lives alone in a big house but leaves his garden gate open and welcomes visitors of all kinds. He claims that he has hundreds of friends and that people come and go in his house and garden. But it's also unclear if this is true. He does admit that neighborhood children mock him and they call him Lamy Lamb. At one point, Derry says, I don't think anybody ever comes. You're here all by yourself and miserable. And no one would know if you were alive or dead. And nobody cares. To this, Mr. Lamb says, You think what you please. But he also seems to confirm Derry's harsh assessment. In his later musings to his bees, saying that none of them, presumably other brief visitors like Derry, ever come back. Lamb is not bitter about this, but he does seem to feel a great sadness and longing for conversation and connection. He's lonely, alienated by others and unfortunately resigned to his fate. The central point about isolation comes towards the end of the play. When Mr. Lamb invites Derry to help him pick crab apples, later in the day the idea of coming back since Derry has to go home first and tell his mother where he is comes to represent human connection and breaking the cycle of isolation. Both characters are lonely but they have found a brief bond with each other. And the question then becomes whether or not they will pursue this connection further or return to their respective states of aloneness. Whether Derry will come back or not, Mr. Lamb makes this clear when Derry tries to insult him. And Lamb says, that's a good excuse good excuse not to come back and you've got a burnt up face and that is other people's excuse. The point he's making here is that people find reasons to separate themselves from others for
for fear of being hurt. Whether this is avoiding someone because of a physical disability they have or refusing to get closer to someone because of the way they challenge one's beliefs. People long for connection but also isolate themselves in an attempt to avoid pain. Of course, Derry does come back, making the bold choice to go against his mother's wishes and his own reclusive tendencies. But he's too late to further his connection with Mr. Lamb and is left alone again. To briefly sum it up, children, the play depicts beautifully yet grimly the sad world of physically impaired. It is not the actual pain or inconvenience caused by a physical impairment that troubles a disabled man, but the attitude of the people around him. Mr. Lamb revives the almost dead feelings of Derry towards life. He motivates him to think positively about life, changes his mindset about people and thinks how a man locked himself as he was scared. A picture fell off the wall and killed. Everything appears to be the same, but it's different. The example of the bees and weeds, the gate of the garden is always open. Derry is inspired and promises to come back. Derry's mother stops him, but he's adamant, saying, if he does not go now, it would be never. When he comes back, he sees Lamb lying on the ground. It is ironical that when he searches a new foothold to live happily, he finds Mr. Lamb dead. In this way, the play depicts the heart-rendering life of physically disabled people with their loneliness, aloofness and alienation. In the end, On the Face of It portrays characters who have many good reasons to avoid other people. But it also illustrates how human beings long for connection with others and how isolation and alienation can lead to great suffering. Alienating others and secluding oneself can be a means of self-preservation. But as the play shows, this isolation only leads to greater unhappiness in the end. All right, children, let's see how much of the text have you internalized. I have a few true or false statements for you. Let's get started. So Derry is described as a young boy, shy, withdrawn and defiant. Yes, this is true. The gate of the garden was always closed. No, the gate of the garden was always open. Derry was inspired and promised to come back. Yes, true. Mr. Lamb always kept his windows shut. That's not right. He kept them open. According to Mr. Lamb, bees make a lot of noise. No. Bees sing, according to Mr. Lamb. Weeds were not required in Mr. Lamb's garden. That's also an incorrect statement. Weeds were a part of Mr. Lamb's garden. Derry's mother welcomed Mr. Lamb in their lives. Not true. She was scared. So it's a false statement. Mr. Lamb motivates Derry to think positively about life. Yes, very true. When Derry comes back, he sees Mr. Lamb lying on the ground. Yes, true. The attitude of the people around him troubled Derry more than his car. True. I hope most of your answers were correct. If not, don't be disappointed. Read up more, look carefully between the lines and I am certain that you will all do very well. All the best. Thank you for listening.